Let's, Let's go. go. Alrighty. How are you doing? Good. Good. How, How are, are you, you brother? brother? Uh, today's been pretty magical, I'll be honest. Hell yeah, I love, I love magical, magical day. day. 120, 120 degrees, degrees but magical. magical. I love it. Uh, yeah, we can save some of the conversation for the podcast, but... Uh, oh, shoot, shoot. we're not we're rolling, rolling yet? yet? Not quite. Is it so, just you and me? Uh, it is just going to be you and me, uh, but I, I wanted no, to, no. to kind of introduce what technologies I'll be using. So no, I'm going to no. record us twice. Uh, once using OBS to get the screen capture, uh, and OBS will have its own audio feed. Uh, and then there's a bot. I don't think Ooh. I've actually invited the bot to my channel yet. Uh, there's a bot called the, Craig. The Craig. Craig. Uh, okay. What Craig does is Craig, uh, you invite Craig into a voice channel. And Craig will announce, hey, I'm recording everybody. Um, and then he creates, um, he records everything and puts it all into a file that is compatible with Audacity. Uh, I'm sure you're cool. familiar with that. Uh, and everybody yeah, yeah. will be on their own individual track. Um, so for every user that joins, it creates a new track. And it's smart enough okay. to know um, if you and I are talking and then 30 minutes later, somebody comes in, uh, it'll create 30 minutes of silence for that track yeah, and then yeah. pick up the recording for them. Uh, let me add Craig. Oh, I've got to give him an auth code. Craig. 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 What? Craig? Craig. Craig. Let's, I don't know what app I used. I think it's my password manager. I've had, I've had uh, uh, two old, old fashioned, fashioned and I'm, I'm just sorry, sorry around this bottle of wine, wine tonight, tonight, so. so. Oh, so if, if I'm, uh, uh, you feel if pretty, I'm a little, little off control, control just, just tell me. Tell me. Um, brother, brother, I have like, like three, three pages, pages of notes, notes written. written. I'm, I'm ready, ready for this. this. I'm, I'm ready. ready. I believe you. Let's, Let's talk, talk fucking, fucking movies, movies, brother. brother. <laughs> I'm glad that you're excited. I'm, I'm being your worst. worst. You're never, you're never, never gonna, you're either gonna, gonna ever have me back, back for a movie week. week. That's, That's my goal. goal. Okay. All right. That's uh, admirable, to be honest. My goal is somebody with that sort of agenda. My goal, My goal is more, is more the, the ladder, ladder but, but we'll, we'll see, what, see happens. what happens. Uh, well, you already have a camera, and I can hear you, so that's uh, two points in your favor. Good first steps. Good first Good first steps. steps. Cameron, Cameron Clark, Clark was, was at, at the brewery, brewery tonight? tonight? Yeah. Uh, he bro, hit bro. me up and was like, hey, let's hang out. Uh, at first, he, he wanted to go see Mission Impossible, and then uh, – said that he was probably going to go see that with his family over the weekend. But when I talked mm -hmm. to him, he said that that didn't happen. His family's crazy, by the way. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, do you know, do you know, know David Cootie? Cootie? Mm, I am familiar with that name. I've heard okay. that. Well, well, we saw, we saw, Dave, Dave, we saw, we saw David, David Cootie at Big Bar tonight, and, and, and it, it fucking blew, blew, blew my mind. mind. I, was I was like, like what is David Cootie about? Because he's like New York based artist, I think. We had a lot of happy hour that we went to, which is why I'm... To, to old fashioned and glass, glass of wine, wine down, down. But, but I love it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're uh, we're house setting out, out Lost, Lost Rabbit, Rabbit, Rabbit now, now. So, so it took me 45, 45 minutes, minutes to get home, but, but I made, made it. Yeah, Lost Rabbit is a long way out there, man. It is. Okay. So, so if you hear, hear dogs, dogs barking, barking in the background, background or Katie getting home, it's a bit too much of a um, I have you turned up to 200%. Uh, okay, where's, okay. Your, where's your microphone? Is it just in your computer? It's, yeah, it's yeah, on top, top, top. top. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, do I, I need to do anything? anything? Uh, I can hear you 
uh, once you leaned in, I, I could hear you a lot better. Uh, okay. okay. So, so I can, I can lean, lean in a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Now let's invite Craig. Craig Wiki. I don't, know, I don't know how to do that. Bye bye and, and volume a little bit to see if that helps. helps. Now, now recording. recording. Sweet. Hell yeah. Thanks, Craig. All right, so I'm thinking, um, and it it's a movie that's not afraid to just, like, go for the jugular, and I loved it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I've heard good things. It's uh, streaming on Netflix coming up, right? Is that right? Yeah, it's a, a, it was made by Netflix, uh, for Netflix. Awesome. So it's in theaters now awesome. in Jackson. Uh, so if you, if anybody who's out there, if you, uh, are interested, go see it now. Uh, I don't know if it'll be in theaters much longer, nice. uh, but I can't, nice. I can't say too much, uh, as far okay. as, um, this, this next particular thing, but I had some friends who got to see, they clone Tyrone two years ago. Uh, it was a test screening. Oh, yeah. So it was before a lot of the, the visual effects were, were finalized and, and probably some story okay. things might be different, but, uh, reconnected with, uh, with those people. And, uh, cause you know, I told them that I was going to go see it and they said, definitely let us know your thoughts. We want to, we want to chat about it. So I was texting them That's over awesome. dinner and, uh, and they used it as a segue. It's not the first time that this has happened, but they used it as a segue to say, speaking of clones, we're having twins. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. And then they got Isn't me crying wonderful? over dinner. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I really love it. John Boyega. The, uh, I was going to say real quick, John Boyega, if you haven't seen him in anything else, watch him in Attack of the Block. Really great alien invasion mm -hmm. themed British film from 2011. I'm, I'm also cheating because I just looked it up because I couldn't remember the name of the film. But it is really good look kind of low budget uh but for what the low budget it is really fantastic i think you'd like it i always forget he's british yeah british british I mean, i'm glad i'm glad this podcast is recording my horrible british accent this is british awesome. it's okay british. uh we're also recording my fancy discord background <laughs> i like it i like it bug month i think that bug hunt bug hunt, bug hunt. not bug month i'm sorry Butt munch. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're ooh. in middle school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. My name is Alex <laughs> Best. Uh, well, Alex, uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell tell the, the folks at home a little bit more about what you do and where you're from. Yeah. So my name is Alex Coates. I'm originally from College Station, Texas, a little college town. Um, I grew up there, but I... Ended up going to Mississippi State for college. Um, that's where Michael and I met. Uh, Hail State, go dogs, as I said in the microphone test earlier. Um, and then I found myself down here after college. Um, spent a little time in the music industry. Uh, I think COVID happened and really wrecked everything in the world, including my job. Um, so I went and worked in PR for a little bit. And then recently I jumped back in the music industry. I'm the talent buyer for Howl and Mouth. I am the managing director for the Hal St. Patty's Parade. I do a little bit of everything. And uh, yeah, I'm just honored to be on here. Honestly, it, Michael knows I've been texting him about doing, about being on the podcast forever. As soon as he posted about it, I was like, I gotta get on there, get me on there, bro. So I'm really excited to be on here. I'm a little nervous. I was telling Michael earlier um, that it's, 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 it's just an honor to be here. I'm excited. So let's do this. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, the honor is always mine. Uh, the This podcast is, is a, a fun thing for me. It's, it's a hobby. It's I'm not making money off of it, but uh, it scratches uh, a few itches for me. Uh, one being <laughs> chatting about movies uh, and the other being uh, a little bit of journalism. So I, I like yeah. just kind of digging into to other people's perspectives. Uh, I like it. 
So I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, this is the first time that we've done a sort of video podcast like this. Uh, and I think it'll open us up to, uh, to have more guests, uh, especially guests that aren't ever going to come to Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, and at the same time, uh, it's still very accessible. Uh, it's a, people who are in Jackson who want to be a part of the podcast. I'm more than willing to work with you uh, to, to get your voice heard uh, if you've got something to say. Uh, and Well, speaking of, I'm just so excited for you to have Christopher Nolan on in 2026 to talk about the follow-up to Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer 2, Electric Boogaloo. Um, I'm, I'm just thrilled that the, the path that we're blazing right now will lead to that. So this is very exciting for me, particularly. So. Yeah, I heard that, that he's already secured uh, uh, Killian Murphy uh, for the sequel. Hell yeah. He's doing that. He's doing the uh, the follow-up to that zombie movie he was in. I just saw that. Oh, yeah, 28 um, years later. The, 28 years later, yeah. Um, yeah, Killian's on a hot streak. Uh, well, let's let's chat like horror movies. Let's chat. Uh, have you seen any any interesting horror movies lately? Oh God, man! You know I'm not a horror movie guy, so I'm one of those guys who oh, yeah, like if I see a hor- if I see a horror movie I like, I look up the trailer on YouTube and I watch it in the, like noon, one o'clock, and I watch it, you know, with twenty people around me to make sure nothing happens. I will say, I will say, a horror film trailer is amazing. It's so great to watch. Because it's like, what is happening here? And it's so great to tune in to just be like, watch what's going on and be like, I'm really interested in this. But if I watch this, I'd be really scared. I wouldn't be able to watch it. So what I do is I wait till it comes out. And a couple of weeks later, I'm like, I'm really interested in what happens to that movie. So I look it up on Wikipedia and read the plot. But that's just me. That's just what I do. So um, have you seen any good horror movies lately? So there's one that's been on my watch list for a long time. Okay. Uh, starring Justin Long uh, called Tusk. Okay. Tusk! The Walrus! Yes. I definitely saw that. I didn't see it, but I've seen it pop up, yeah. I didn't realize it was a Kevin Smith project. Uh, uh, <gasps> yeah, how was it? Uh, it's a Kevin Smith project. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I gave it three and a half stars. It's hey. It's fun to me, but... I could see why a lot of people were, were annoyed by it <laughs> and put yeah. off by it. Um, yeah. I remember when it first came out, it was like, it very, it came out to like, you know, very, crit- very different critical reviews. Some people were like, oh, do you? And some people were like, this is the weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. So, it's it sounds like it's somewhere in Europe. What's that? Uh, it was an A24 film. I, I, Ooh. Uh, that was one of the reasons it was on my list because yeah. A24 puts out bangers. Puts out bangers. It's a 2.4 star on Letterbox. Just point yeah, that out. It. You're coming up above the curve, buddy. Um, that's not the, the, the only time that Letterbox has been wrong, in my opinion. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, a, four, a four star on Mission Impossible 7. More like a 4.5, 4.8 star, if I'm going to be honest with you. It's really, I'm just kidding. I'm just okay. kidding. No, I love, I've, I've really gotten into Letterbox lately. Have you, I have, so just a word of warning. I, you know this, Michael, but for any of the, the podcast listeners, I'm very much more of a TV, television show watcher. Um, that's something I kind of pride myself in. Is I'm, I'm really into TV. I like watch pretty much anything you put in front of me. Um, and so I found a letterbox like copy for TV called serialized and I downloaded it and I've been like going through TV shows that I've been watching recently. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool. It's not, the UI is not as good as letterbox. It doesn't have the community like letterbox, but it's still pretty cool. And for a TV show watcher like me, I'm like, yeah, I can log the TV shows I watched and rate it and blah, 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 blah. This is not an ad. I'm not paid by Serialize. <laughs> I apologize if anyone got the misinformation that it was. I just downloaded it earlier. Thank you. You're just a big fan. Yeah, big fan. Big fan so far. 
Uh, I have heard of serialize. Um, okay. Uh, it was advertised to me on Twitter pretty pretty much immediately after I joined Letterboxd. And at that point, it was kind of uh, one of those things was like, too little, too late, bruh. Uh, <laughs> I already got my, my good reads for movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and now I'm, I'm up to, uh, I think my average is like nine movies a week. Yeah, my, mine is not. For, for all the listeners and the viewers, mine is not. Uh, well, that's not that's not always feature length films. Uh, another horror yeah. movie that I watched recently it was a short film uh, I shared with some folks who were at my house over the weekend. Uh, there's this guy on YouTube named Dylan Clark, and he's got some of the most fantastic short horror films I've seen on YouTube. Uh, but the the one that that I showed some folks was this one called Portrait of God, and mm -hmm. it is just really atmospheric uh but it also explores um kind of the through line of just uh, a religious experience and yeah it's seven minutes uh look it up on wow. youtube portrait of god by dylan clark sure, yeah. great great short film um the they were freaked out <laughs> so <laughs> it did its job portrait of god. so yeah. when you're watching a short film like i'm not as familiar with this world of short films are they usually that length are they a little bit longer what's the like standard short film length there um i think most of the time short films range between like 10 and 15 minutes uh, there are uh -huh. films that i've seen that are, that are longer than that uh, and uh listeners of the podcast might know that uh, i've actually uh, been part of a short film that released last year, last October, called Mask, and that one it was was 30 minutes and it was uh, kind of atmospheric, post-apocalyptic maybe, uh, mm -hmm. not quite horror, but used a couple horror tropes. Uh, yeah, I think 30 minutes is is kind of my uh, upper limit for short films. Mm -hmm. Anything beyond that, and you're getting more into feature length. Uh, yeah. I think generally people people stay like 15 minutes you know? yeah well i've been i was telling somebody i've been really into short stories more recently and so like i've never i don't know i've never really consumed uh movies in that way and it really interests me like the short more movie format you know like i said i'm a big tv guy so i'll watch episodes all the time and you know like whether it's in the background or just watching straight on you know um they're only short stories in themselves but it's not the it's not the full story so i'm really interested in what like you know the short the short film process is and you know what what about it so that's really fascinating to me is all i was gonna say um uh, well I'd, I'd like to recommend a couple uh, yeah bring it on so uh uh, well, these aren't films themselves, but uh, if I'm gonna write this down, by the way, I'm gonna find a pen and a pad uh, for all you're... for all you video <laughs> viewers. You can watch me do this. You can watch him write it down because this is legendary. Uh huh. You can watch me look frantically for a piece of paper. Uh, you'll have lots of filmmakers who just release their stuff on YouTube or uh -huh. uh, or whatever, um, and, and then there are a couple channels that uh, will either go and find these people. Or uh, filmmakers will go to this channel for distribution. Uh, so mm -hmm. one is called uh, Dust, uh, and they do primarily like science fiction short films. And then there's Alter A L T E R, uh, and they're uh, done by the same people. Uh, but Alter mm -hmm. is, is more horror short films. Okay. Uh, okay. And then if you're wanting just like something more experimental. Uh, less uh, genre specific. Uh, there's a channel called Amaletto. It's O M E L E T O, I think. Uh, and they've got all sorts Amaletto. of interesting ones. Like there was one I, I watched where um, they like flipped the world around to where uh, it was normal to have Down syndrome, uh, and mm. the, so there's like a Down syndrome couple that has. Uh, a child without down syndrome and mm. it's like how it, it, it's yeah it's just an exploration of, of what it would look like if that was flipped 
uh, and it kind of made me cry. It was really sweet. <laughs> mm. uh, so nice. I really love short films just because you can have a director who's got an idea and, and they just yeah. are able to just get that idea out, you know, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the like most impactful short films that I've watched was the one um, that Wes Anderson did. And I think it was in between Darjeeling and Limited and something else maybe. Um, but it was, it was a short film. Oh God. Now that I'm not looking up anything, I'm going to look like an idiot, but it was a short film that had Jason Schwartzman, of course. And it was about a street race through an Italian, you know, unnamed Italian city. And I, I think it was a promotional support for something. It might've been like him selling out. It might've been uh promotional support with Darjeeling or something. But um, it was, you know, classic Wes Anderson, all the, the colors, the vibrancy, the quirkiness. It was great. Um, but I'm, I'm, when, when I find it out, when I, when I go to the Google later, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, I love these. I love these Jeffins. Duet, Alter, and Amuleto, which I really want to pronounce Amuleto, but I'm not going to Amuleto. because I'm sure that a lot of people put a lot of time into developing that program, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, I worry but, that you yeah, wrote it down wrong. Up. It's uh, dust. Uh, I think he dust. Oh, I can't read my own handwriting, Michael. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, it is dust. And now everybody knows that, uh, both on the the video podcast and yes, else. it is not duet. It is dust. <laughs> Cut that and insert it in somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I... Editing, I think, is going to be really simple. It's it's either going to be cut or not, uh, unless I can hire an editor. Do you know any, any yeah, editors? Yeah. I don't know any editors, but I will say before we go forward, um, hello to our friend Craig. I uh, I bow at the altar of your greatness. Please don't hurt me. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Okay. Amen. Okay. Uh, all right. What do you want to talk about next? I don't know, man. So I got, I, I was telling, telling you earlier, sorry, I uh, pick up there for a minute. I was telling you earlier, I have a lot of notes. I, um, like you said, it, it's so cool for me to be here. So like, I, I got a little stressed out. And when I get a little stressed out, I just write notes for preparation. So, you know, I texted you the other day. I was like, thank you for being, having me on. What do I need to do any homework? Do I need to do anything? And you're like, nah, it's just going to be a free-flowing right. conversation. It's going to be great. It's going to be casual. And then, of course, I was like, no, I, I got to have talking notes ready. So I have a few notes. But your podcast, so I'm following your lead, brother. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate that you come prepared. Uh, that's, that, that is definitely a, a thing that I have known and, and come to love about you. It's that uh, if ready Alex isn't go. freaking out about something 20 minutes before it's happening, then he's he's – obviously not really that concerned about it so. mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and the things i'm really concerned about um are very high the things i'm not concerned about are very low the number of things so um yeah that's that's pretty often for me as someone who works in the music industry is i'm always like oh let's uh you know and so it's completely over so um but yeah how are we, how let me let me just start off the conversation. How excited are you for this weekend, brother? It's finally come. You ready to talk the about your it? I'm. It, unless you got anything else, I'm ready. I'm. I've, I've got notes ready. I'm. I'm ready to go. Yeah. So the only structure for this podcast that I've had in my mind is just how long can we talk about anything before we talk about Barbenheimer? Well, I'm not keeping a watch, but it's probably not very long. It's been about thirty minutes. Oh, wow. Talkie talkie. Yeah. Barbenheimer, brother. I'm ready. I'm so excited. I was confirming my uh, confirming my appearances this weekend. This this afternoon, I was double checking to make sure I got the tickets. I was all those things. I'm 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 ready for Barbenheimer. What are your plans? What What's your schedule look like? Yeah, so I, I'll tell you mine. I have to know if your order is the same or different. Uh, okay. It can only be one of two ways, obviously. But, sure, sure. 50, uh, 50 or so as we're speaking, today is Tuesday. Uh, what's the date? July 18th? July 18th. Uh, so in two days, uh, 
July 20th, I will be seeing Barbie at 4 p.m. Uh, and then I'll have a little bit of a break. I'll probably go to Firehouse Subs. And then I'll be seeing Oppenheimer at 7.25. Nice. Nice. Both of the Malco, Grandview Cinema in Madison, Mississippi? Yes. That's the only IMAX showing for Oppenheimer that night. You're not made by Malco Grandview. <laughs> no. Malco Grandview hates me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I bet they see you constantly, brother. They saw me today. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing. Uh, I think I had to do some math in my mind because I can't remember. My wife was considering going on Friday, and then she uh, she took one for the team is going with us to see it at ten thirty a.m. on Saturday. Up at night. At no barbie sorry oh, okay. we're doing barbie first we're doing barbie first 10 30 a.m cinemark in jackson you're not made by cinemark jackson for the references in this podcast <laughs> so we're going to see barbie at 10 30 on saturday and then we're gonna do a little brunt hangout chill um and then we're going to see oppenheimer and imax 7 35 on saturday um i'm someone suggested doing it on sunday and i said i cannot wait that long um i'm worried about spoilers i'm worried about not experiencing the movie event of the summer besides mission impossible 7 and so you know i uh i was like we have to go see saturday um and there's like maybe two or three of us going and uh we're gonna have a good time with it i'm I I saw uh, Mission Impossible Seven in IMAX last weekend at Grandview, and it was phenomenal. The entire experience, head to toe, can't complain. Um, so I'm feeling the same way about IMAX. Um, I have seen all the pictures of the film reels. I've seen everything that's come out about how spectacular this movie is, and I am over the moon excited. I uh, I'm I'm ready. I am well, ready. I think uh, it it would be hard to spoil Oppenheimer uh, because yeah. it's in history books. <laughs> sure, but at sure. the same time, but also I, I get what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. There's a there's yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a thing that I'm curious about because I've been avoiding trailers this year, but mm -hmm. it's inescapable. I've seen the Oppenheimer trailer a couple times, and the shift uh, between like the black and white scenes and the color yeah. scenes. I'm really interested into to what that device is going to be. Uh, Absolutely. Do you have any guesses? I don't. You know, I've seen the trailers and I've been like, is this just for effects? Is this for marketing? But the more I think about Nolan, I'm like, nah, this dude is really going to throw a freaking curveball on us. And I think it's going to be really exciting to the way it pans out. Um, you know, I, I'm a big Nolan fan. Uh, pretty much anything he does, I'm like, big thumbs up. So, um, you know, I think from the director's side, I think it's it's going to come out clean. I'm excited. Yeah. I, the only idea that I've been able to come up with that is plausible to me, and I'm not, like, married to it or anything, so I'd be happy if it was wrong. But the uh, I've been thinking, like, maybe the black and white scenes are, uh, like, the objective perspective or like the historical perspective mm -hmm. and then the yeah. color scenes would be like from from oppenheimer's emotional perspective yeah his own subjective um, i really like that i really like that because you know um i i'm really interested to see how much like if there's even an inclusion of old video work old um case videos or whatever and how much you know, I haven't really read too much from a review side about like how accurately true is this or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I'd be really interested in that. You know, I, I think there's some really good, I've heard that there are some really good biographies and books about Oppenheimer out there. I haven't read any. Um, but you know, he's, he's one of those characters in history that isn't talked about too much, but has, you know, influenced so much of the history of the world in the last, 50 to 100 years so like um i'm really interested to see how it pans out from a cinematic perspective but also a historic perspective like is it is this historically true mm. does this stand the test of time whatever and i think that's a struggle like 
any filmmaker comes to when they're making those sorts of bits movies. Um, you know, the criticism they get, whether it's it's historically true or not, fact or not, and, you know, that affects your um, impression of the movie in some ways. Some people don't care as much, some people do, but um, regardless, I think what Nolan's going to serve us up with is going to be a really good time. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny, like, how how many references there are to Oppenheimer that just kind of <laughs> fly under the radar if you don't always think about it. Because, uh, like, even in Tenet, uh, Nolan's last movie, uh, there's a, a, a scene where characters are talking about, like, this is, you know, this future, future generation's Oppenheimer. Uh, mm -hmm. That would make sense to people who have seen the movie Tenet. Uh, to people who haven't seen the movie Tenet, Tenet it's about the future. Yep. <laughs> creating this, like, nuclear thing that could destroy the mm -hmm. universe. Uh, mm -hmm. And how that is, like, being traveled back in time uh, so no one's obviously been thinking about it for a while um, and there's uh, even been reports that it was robert pattinson who gave christopher yeah. nolan the books that kind of inspired nolan to make this movie uh, but yeah. just the other day i was watching uh, ex machina and mm -hmm. uh, remembered uh, there, there's a, a a scene where the characters are talking and one of them quotes oppenheimer who was quoting the Bhagavad Gita uh, saying, mm -hmm. now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. <laughs> and like the character said that quote and then takes his beat. And then it's like, that was Oppenheimer, by the way. And he's saying this to this like tech billionaire genius. And he's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I feel uh, like this is probably, you know, like I'm really interested. Uh, this is an entirely different prospect, uh, prospect of the conversation, but you know, Nolan as a director, right? Like, um, I'm really interested. One, this is, like you mentioned, that's something that's pervaded Nolan's work for a while. Um, so it's clearly something he's been thinking about. But two, you know, this in the way that people have been talking about this production, I really feel like this is a use it or lose it time for Nolan, right? Like, um, coming off of Tenet, which in a lot of ways, I think, was freaking phenomenal i'm kind of gang for life um huge fan of the movie i don't understand what is going on at all but i love the movie um uh, and then but you know for the most part it was a lot of people were very split on it a lot of people were like i don't know what's going on and a lot of people didn't see because i think it was released in was it released during covid where it was like you know one of those things where a lot of people weren't out the movie theaters anyway so um, I feel like Nolan is almost like at a point where this next movie will define him in one way or another. Um, someone who's had this huge history in Hollywood and very eccentric filmmaker, makes stuff that, you know, a lot of people are, you know, some critics think are amazing, the best thing I've ever seen. Some critics are very negative about. Um, you know, from what I've heard, this is very commonly celebrated film but at the same time you know there's something to be said about the position he's in right now where it's like what's next yeah yeah i absolutely agree uh i mean just just following his career uh yeah the his first film was uh following his first feature film was mm -hmm. following and mm -hmm. uh going back and watching that mm -hmm. and then seeing you know where he's come to now i think it yeah. is, is just it, there's so much that has evolved in the film industry uh, as well as yeah. just him as a filmmaker absolutely absolutely and you know like you know of course he gets the uh the respect and the celebration for all the batman movies which is very um much within the dc universe and so uh, but you know he has so many other movies and i feel like because Tenet came out at that time and it was very confusing and it was very weird to some people, I think it fell flat to a lot of people. So I think I think with this movie, um, in some ways, it's like something to prove, if not for him, for the movie-going audience as a whole and the, for the critical community. So um, I'm very excited to see what happens. Same. Uh, do you plan on seeing Oppenheimer more than once man 
That's a good question. I mean, like, of course I'll watch it when it drops on VOD or streaming or whatever. Um, but in theaters, I imagine I will at some point. Um, it's been a minute since I've watched a movie more than once in the theaters. Um, just because of all the difficulties that theaters bring, whether it's travel and money and whatever. But I don't know, man, like, I... So I, when I was doing notes for this podcast, I was like writing down a bunch of stuff and like, cause I knew we were going to talk about Barbenheimer, so I wanted to be like prepared. And so I was like rereading old like deadline articles and all this stuff about Oppenheimer and I was reading the cast list and I was reading everything and I was like, man, this is going to be a really great film mm -hmm. or it's going to be either a spectacular failure or a really great film. Uh, either way, I am so excited for the ride um i actually have a i have an oppenheimer casting game ready to go whenever you're ready i was i was reading through the cast list on wikipedia and i was like my mind would kept like popping off like what he's in this movie yeah i uh, he, i was gonna say i was gonna say she's in this movie but then it, i remember reading through the cast list and was really disappointed about the number of women and number of people of color um which is very low um that's a entirely different conversation but, but that's kind of a kind problem of with a lot of nolan movies uh it's like sure. even, yeah like, even in tenet like yeah hit, hit, there's just one woman <laughs> and she yeah. doesn't always have the best dialogue uh and kind yeah. of her whole function is i love my kid uh yeah so yeah um, which elizabeth de becky huge fan let me just put that out there right now she's still elizabeth rocking becky, the best the night manager the crown so great um an underrated classic the man from uncle um yeah Olivia to becky next up but yes it's it's frustrating when you watch these movies and it's like you know so so many of his movies specifically are very absent of female characters that aren't you know more than a, a talking piece and so um I, I don't know about Oppenheimer, to be honest with you. You know, I've seen, you know, it's got uh, Emily Blunt, it's mm -hmm. got Florence Pugh, it's got these phenomenal actresses in the movie. But, you know, is this going to be anything more than a, you know, um, male focused view of the world? I you know, actually, that, I uh, doubt it. I, I've been, you know, trying my best to just avoid it's weird like I, I still consume a lot of film news uh at the same time mm -hmm. i am trying not to consume enough news to like know everything about a film before i go see it so with oppenheimer yeah. it's like okay i know i already know i'm gonna go see this movie uh yeah. and so i've been pretty good at being able to avoid anything i actually didn't know that florence Pugh was even in the movie until twitter blew up oh. uh and they were all like oh there's a like 30 minute sex scene with florence Pugh." And yeah like, oh shit yeah. in this movie crazy. <laughs> crazy maybe we shouldn't play this game i don't want to ruin the surprise for you but uh it's i was i was reading through the wikipedia article earlier and looking through the the cast list and i was like Man, this would be this would be a fun game let me see if i can Trick Michael on any of these people appearing in, in, I mean, we in can still uh, play. It, it, in it's Atlanta. close enough that uh, you know, I, I, I just need to to see the film. But okay, uh, how how did you imagine playing the game? Okay, so I've got ten actors. I'm looking through my list and realizing how male centric I'm being right now. But also looking through the cast, whatever. So I have ten actors, and the game is is this actor in the movie Oppenheimer so I ask you an actor and you tell me whether or not they're in the movie Oppenheimer I'm going to keep results I'm going to give you a score at the, the end out of 10 and you, I'll just read the actor's name and you tell me whether or not they're in Oppenheimer or not okay I'm ready to play okay, okay. the first name is Gary Oldman No. Gary Oldman is in the movie Oppenheimer. Not a great start, Michael. Not a great <laughs> start. Man, I really might get your ass on this. I'm excited. You might. Okay. <laughs> All right, number two. Is Matthew McFadden 
in Oppenheimer. Oh, I don't even know who that is. Uh... Matthew McFadden uh, from Succession, Pride and Prejudice. Um, oh, did he, he play Mr. Darcy? Only... He played Miss, I think so, in uh, hmm. in Pride and Prejudice. Kind of the the man of the moment and from Succession, Success, Tom Tom Wom's Gans. I'm gonna say no. You are correct. He's not in this movie. I thought I could All right. Is Jack Quaid in Oppenheimer? Um, okay, so are you you're able to tell me what other movies have been they've been in? Oh shoot! I probably should have for some of these. I probably should have prepared. So Jack Quaid is in a few different movies. Uh, you know, specifically right now, he's in The Boys on Amazon. He's like the, I think he's the one that doesn't have any superpowers and is the kind of weird of the inners that you probably don't know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But he's also in, um, he's in the movie Plus One on Hulu. I feel like I gave you a bad one. Um, he's in the Scream remix from 2022. He's in Scream 6 from 2023. Um, I'm going to say no. He, plays a he is in Oppenheimer. I feel really bad right now <laughs> if you didn't know who Jack Quaid is. But phenomenal young actor. Um, highly right for anybody listening. I recommend the movie Plus One on Hulu. It's a great romantic comedy that came out in a time when not a lot of romantic comedies were coming out. Um, I'm a sucker for romantic comedy, so I uh, just wanted to throw that out. Plus One. Really great film. Uh, so that kind of dilutes my uh, next question is, is Dennis Quaid in the movie Oppenheimer? Okay, so if Jack Quaid was in the movie and I got that one wrong, I feel like you threw Dennis Quaid in there as a trick. I think he's not in the movie. You're correct. Yes. <laughs> Two for four. Um, yeah, I kind of I kind of threw that in there as like a Dennis Quaid, Jack Quaid, Wombo, but... Uh, speaking of other TV shows for me to recommend, Dennis Quaid in the new Steven Soderbergh TV show on Hulu called Full Circle. We all know Steven Soderbergh, the phenomenal filmmaker between behind Bo- Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Twelve, um, No Sudden Moves. That's on a uh, all... on Max, not Hulu. Max, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not Hulu. Yes, Max. In my mind, I was thinking HBO, which HBO doesn't exist anymore, but HBO Max, yes. It is on Max. Great, great TV show. Really weird. Really, um, if you've seen Soderbergh recently, he's been using these smaller cameras. He's been doing a lot of really weird iPhone tricks. And um, this this TV show really drops you in the middle of things. And it's really good. I'm distracting from the, the game. Um, all right, next up. Is the actor Alden Ehrenreich? In Oppenheimer, I'm gonna say yes. He is in the movie Oppenheimer. Our boy Alden Ehrenreich is back. The our our boy from Solo. Under I loved movie. him in Solo. I know that wasn't everybody's That's favorite, great. but I know. Oh man, he was great. And then also fantastic in the movie um, Hail Caesar, which I think is streaming on Netflix, but. Hail Caesar, George Clooney, Alden Ehrenreich. It's a, uh, it's one of the Coen brothers, I think. Um, but right. very great take, take on old school Hollywood. All right, who's next? Ehrenreich, right? Who is who's next? Um, the act is the actor Alex Wolf in this movie. Oh, that's uh, that's my my boy from Hereditary. Your boy. Pig. Your boy. Yes. Is he in that movie? I don't think he's going to be in this one. You are incorrect, my guy. Alex oh. Wolf is in the movie Oppenheimer. Man, good for him. Right? Right? Um, okay, next up is the actor Michael Caine in Oppenheimer. It's got to be. It's Nolan. He, he is not in the movie Oppenheimer. Oh. I, tricked you. I knew I was going to get you on that one. I was like, let me insert a Nolan favorite, see how it does. All right. Uh, next up is Miles Teller 
in Oppenheimer. That's a hard no. You are correct, my guy. You are correct. I feel like he'd be like my front row for the uh, the press appearances, but I thought I might trick you on that one. All right, the last one. The tenth question is Kenneth Branagh in the movie Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. Okay, he was in Tenet. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think, I think he would be in this one. He is in this one. Okay. You're correct. Let me then, tabulate the scores real quick. Was it half? How, how do you think? You, how do you think you did? I hope I at least got half of them right. You did. You got a fifty percent. Okay. You know, in a lot of places, that's a uh, that's a failing score. But in my book, brother, you're good to go. You're good to go. But what what is going? This cast list is absolutely bonkers. Uh, it's it's does seem pretty stacked. Uh, yeah. And it's also a three hour movie. So uh, I'm sure that, that there will be plenty of, of people who get some time to shine. Um, yeah. The yeah. one thing that I'm really interested in seeing is uh, I know that, that one thing that's been difficult with filming for IMAX uh, is just the size of the cameras. It's, it's hard mm-hmm. to get close ups. Uh, mm-hmm. And I saw a couple images uh, that no one was able to, to get really really good close-ups of Killian Murphy. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm I'm curious how that's going to feel on the big screen. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. What do you what do you take of this? I just saw this story pop up this afternoon. What do you take of uh, Killian Murphy only eating a, uh, I think it was like a walnut a day in order to be slim enough to play Oppenheimer? I saw I saw Emily Blunt was talking about like he starved himself for this role. He went to another he went to another place. That's my Emily Blunt voice, by the way. No, but it's just like yeah, too. yeah, yeah, right, right. Man, these John actors like he's got something special to come home to. Actors that like the change the way that they live for these roles. Yeah, uh, like that. That's a level of commitment that I just don't I don't know that I have. Um, yeah, it's like I can't, I can't even change. Uh, I, I can't even get into the office at nine thirty in the morning for my first meeting. I usually take that one at home and then drive to the office. Uh, yeah, just and it's not because I wake up late. I wake up at six fifteen every morning, but I just like being at home. And, and yeah, what do you think it is in the in the actor's mind that they're like, I have to like, I'm so dedicated to telling this story that I will only eat a pistachio a day in order to appear more accurately as Robert Oppenheimer. You know, like, it, it, I feel like it takes an, a level above to be in that mindset, to be like, you know, I will tell this story the best way possible in the most genuine way possible. Like, do, do you think it's, mo- what do you think is motivating them? Is it like, you know oh, when you come, come to a, to filmmaking and you see like all of the technical roles uh, that mm-hmm. people take on and all yeah. of the, the the knowledge that you have to have to to just be able to make a movie correct uh, like all of that is very on the books and can be studied and yeah, yeah there there are like acting methods and schools of thought around acting but there's still just so much of that craft that's just a mystery mm-hmm. and i think yeah. it's because they're like tapping into like you things that are universal uh mm. to to human experience yeah uh, and so yeah i think they're they're really just trying to get into the headspace of a character and in this case like this is a character uh sure but it's a a real person a lived person uh an experience that happened on this earth uh yeah and yeah killian can't go back and talk to robert oppenheimer but he can try and live like oppenheimer well you know it's something that we talked about earlier where it's like you know, definitely part of the influence on this film is, is it going to be historically accurate? Is it going to be true to form for who this person was? And I'm sure, like, you know, among the millions of things going through these actors' minds are, like, that influence, you know, whether it's, you know, if they believe it's true versus what critics 
say is true of this human being in the past or you know if it's you know history itself and i'm you know i i can't imagine being an actor in that situation being like i am walking in today to act like someone who was on this earth how many years ago that's crazy that's crazy that's i feel like that's a, a privileged position to be in yeah right uh, i do wonder how much of a of a biopic that this will be because uh, I, I don't think it's going to be just a straightforward biopic. That's that's not really Nolan's thing. But I do think there will be some elements of that. Uh, yeah. So there's got to be some historical truth telling. Um, yeah. As, as well as an exploration of what was this person like, and, and what might he have he what might he have felt uh, to you know be thinking about these decisions because think you know one of the things is his perspective is like if i don't if i don't help make this somebody else will uh so mm. it's like what do you what do you do with that when you know that what you're doing is also going to be used to kill people yeah yeah and it's like it's like we talked about earlier you know like so much of who this person was and what he discovered and um how he changed the world has impacted us from you know, the moment that that was discovered, you know, decided upon or discovered. And to this day, you know, like so much of our world was defined in it on, on his creation between the 60s, the 90s, and even today, you know, we still sit around like, you know, we're a little more laissez-faire about things, but it's still like a huge, huge threat upon the world. I mean, so much of these Mission Impossible movies I'm watching, right, are... are so focused on the threat that this uh this totally ballistic weapon totally destructional weapon can rot upon humanity and mm. are you know coming out of airplanes and running along the birds fleet and doing all this stuff in order to prevent from happening and you know it all comes down all these stories all of these everything comes down to this one person and um you know, of course, a team of people, but, you know, this story is being told in a way that really influences the rest of our lives in so many ways, the rest of American society in so many ways. So, um, yeah, I think, I, you know, I was going to ask you about, like, the political, social impact of the movie and if it will, you know, be positive in some ways or whatever, but, you know, like, well, there's something, there's something to talk about there because uh, yeah, I, I I read about uh, some test screenings, and mm -hmm. uh, they they were describing that people who were leaving the test screenings were uh, like heavy laden, and mm -hmm. it I, I think that uh, I think that I, I've felt that in the past, like with a Nolan movie with Dunkirk, uh, I, I felt you know this like weight of history uh i felt the same thing with 1917 so i think with war movies it's like especially prevalent but this feeling yeah. uh it's like like when you go to visit a museum like the the two mississippi museums i know i've heard a lot of people go and they you know, yeah. experience like the civil rights museum and they see uh different things that open their eyes to you know how slaves were were mistreated uh and yeah. uh, i I, I I'm a person who cries pretty evil, easily in movies, and so I would not be surprised if uh, I walk out of that you know, with some tears dried on my face. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, like yeah, I was just gonna say that one, the Mississippi museums are incredible. If anybody's listening to this and you know is in the Mississippi area, I highly recommend walking through there and experiencing the entire thing. Um, but to yeah, you know, it's walking out of that movie on Saturday night. I think I'm gonna be left with a lot of thoughts about like, what the fuck, you know? Like, I'm usually I feel like sometimes I'm watching walking out of Christopher Nolan movies and be like, what the fuck, what's what's going on? And I feel like with this one, I'm be like, what the fuck, what is going? on? on you know mm -hmm. and so uh i'm gonna be i'm i'm excited to see what the um 
the takeaway for a lot of people from this movie is going to be and what he, what specifically Nolan's message is going to be from this film. I think um, it's something that will probably be dissected a lot, but will also be like, you know, I think it'll be very interesting to read all those think pieces and listen to all those podcasts. So I'm excited. For sure. And maybe we'll have more episodes to cover Oppenheimer yes. in depth. Uh, well, we've been going for about an hour, brother. So uh, before we wrap up, I want to give you the opportunity uh, to to shout out uh, anything that you, that you want, anybody you want. No. Well, uh, I had this I had this whole thing planned about Barbie, but I'm sure we'll get to it on the next episode. I'm excited for that one. Uh, I'm just excited to to even be on here to have the opportunity to talk to Michael about movies. This is really exciting to me. Um, I if if I got a shout out, I'm just gonna say support live music, support local music. Um, come eat a meal at Howlin' Mouse sometime. Come see a show at Howlin' Mouse. The food's good. The music's great. It's a great time. Uh, besides that, um, watch movies, watch TV shows, um, and I will catch you on the next episode. I'm excited. Uh, let me, have me let on me any time, brother. Have yeah. you watched The Bear?